Okay, today I'm going to show you my new portable camp stove from the 1920s. So here's my portable camp stove from the 1920s. That last patent date is 1927. So you may be wondering why I purchased this. Well, it was a good deal and it goes with my 1920s picnic set. So back when these were made, it was popular to keep them in your car in case you went on a picnic or wanted to go on a picnic. I have not tested this machine yet. It runs off a of gasoline, um, like a blowtorch, um, but I'm going to test it right now. Okay, I'm going to take it over here and I'll set it up about right here. Okay, first we will undo the legs. Okay, now I will put it right side up. Okay, now we will open it. So you push this in and then lift up. Notice the burner decoration matches my 1927 quality gas stove. And this lifts up. So here is the, um, the fuel canister. And I'll read you all what it runs off of. Oh look, it came with a wrench that was part of the toolkit for an old car. Okay, this is the fuel tank for it. Um, let's read it. It says... When, when stove is in operation, have the tank this side up or hanging straight down. Gasoline will not feed with tank in any other position. It's basically like a blowtorch. Okay, let's fill this thing with gasoline. I can already tell this seal and this air pump will probably be bad, but we'll see. So if the seal is bad, I'll do a part two after I fix it. Okay, let's put gas in this. Look, it's still good. I wet it with some gasoline. Okay, now we're going to screw the lid back on really good. And then we'll make sure the valves are closed and we'll pump up the pressure to make some gasoline vapors in this thing. Okay, to close these valves, we have to make sure they're turned all the way right because righty tighty, lefty loosey. And right will tighten the valve and close the seals. Okay, now we'll pump up the pressure until the resistance builds on this thing. Okay, it looks like it's leaking here. Let me see if I can tighten this more. Or get a gasket. So it does need a gasket. Look at that original gasket. It's string, so I assume they soaked it in tallow and then put it in here. That's what my car manual says to do for the water pump if it's dripping. Okay, I'm going to see if we can get the original string gasket working again. I have some lard right here. I'm going to soak the string in lard, and then I'll put it back in there and see if we can get a good seal. Okay, I've soaked the string in lard, or I've rubbed lard all over the string. Let's try and pump this up and see if any air bubbles occur, because they did before. Oh, now they're not. Okay, it's working. Okay, it's holding the air, or the gas pressure. It's The pressure inside there has vaporized some of the gas. So now we will um, connect this to the stove and try to light it after we turn that on. Okay, so this thing didn't come with directions, but most things don't that I get. So I'm assuming this key controls the burners and the gas must connect on this side. Okay, let's see. Okay, we might as well try this first. I believe it feeds in right there because it says this side up um, or hanging straight down. Okay, I believe it actually connects this way. Okay, let's test it. Okay, I've opened the valve a tiny bit. Okay, now I'm going to light. Okay, I'm going to attempt to light this thing. Let's open this valve. Okay, 
Okay, I'm striking the match. Turning on the gas. Oh my gosh, it's burning. Okay, we have gas, I hear it. There, it's lit. Yes, yes! Okay, let me reverse. See, you can see the fire burning. Both burners are lit, I believe. Yeah, that one's producing heat. Let's turn up the fire. Okay, I'll open this a little more. And that is running off a of gasoline vapor. It works. It's alive. Okay, now I'll turn it off.